Well, hello, everyone. If you're able, please stand with us and turn to page 85 in your red hymnal. 85. And the title of this song is exactly what you and I as Christians ought to be doing. Bring them in. say again it's good to see you for our midweek prior time Bible study uh, I look forward to our midweek service Amen. I don't know if others do but I do it's uh, we need our batteries charged through the middle of the week because I'm sure whatever's been said or done here Sunday the devil's already tried to snatch on it so we need to be encouraged and strengthened again right but it's good to be in God's house appreciate those of you that have made your way out as far as announcements, do remember this Sunday, Lord's Day, prayer time, 9.30, Bible study class is 9.45, worship service at 11, and I believe they mentioned we're going to have a covered dish meal Sunday after service, so don't forget that. We'll enjoy a meal together. <clears throat> Any more announcements? Time's going to change here in a couple of weeks, 1st of November. You can set your clocks back. Yes. I didn't remember Marie. She she had surgery Monday morning early. Okay. Is that for what she's been trying to get done? Okay. Monday in Charlotte. So you remember Marie. All right. Any more announcements? If not our prayer time, certainly the lost start at the top. We'll still remember the lost. Marie's been mentioned. Let's remember Marie. Johnny's doing better with his back. Glad he's able to be back. There's some traveling. Let's remember those that are traveling. J.D. and Marla, continue to lift up both of them as you pray. Sister Ruth back there, don't forget her. Uh, Luke, Ruth was telling me, got him a nice Cadillac going, sounds like. So remember him, remember their family as you pray. Others, get right ahead. Just remember uh, Warren's son, Mike. Yes. Warren's son, many of y'all probably do not know, uh, they called him early Monday, and Warren's son, Mike, is in the hospital in Chapel Hill. It was sort of a, a quick thing. He's got this flesh-eating bacteria, and it's pretty rough. And Warren has been, and Mary both, have been giving me updates and texting me and calling me, but uh, Warren called me, I guess, about five o'clock this evening and his plan was to be here tonight but uh, he had gotten a text from down there some of them that's down there with him and said that his son had, had a real bad day today and that uh, they was going to call him at seven o'clock tonight need to talk to him and he said well I really want to come to church I said listen brother you need to be there to take that call Amen. whatever that call may be so but you do remember Warren and his son Mike Mary, remember that whole family, if you would. We don't know what the outcome may be, but uh, do remember them as you pray. If you will, please remember Ray Brooks also. Her husband passed away, especially in my 
Remember this family. Continue to remember my father. I had him down this morning at Winston for the uh, stress test. And, uh, of course, you know, you got to wait to hear the results. So we've got him back home. So providing the cardiologist turns him loose, then the next step is the stomach doctor. And uh, they'll run the light down and see what may be going on there. So continue still to remember him, if you would, as you pray. Still got to get Remember these. Continue to remember those that request for prayer on our online ministry. Don't forget them. Sister Diane is scheduled Friday morning. Don't know the time yet for her knee surgery. Uh, I have a brother-in-law, Shane Bentley, who will be having hip replacement Friday sometime. Pretty young, 50 years old. Well, he's not 50. I'll not put 50 on him just yet, but he's on the doorstep. But uh, remember him. Still remember Mike Wilson. Yes, amen. Amen. Remember this. Continue to remember Phyllis's brother as you pray. Gloria McCann. Peggy. Remember Peggy. Still remember Diane too as you pray. Early Gilly. I haven't heard anything different since what I heard Saturday night. But uh, continue to remember him and that family. Remember our church. Pray one for another. Pray for all that has positions in the church, whatever they do, leaders, Sunday school workers, whatever the case may be. Pray one for another. That's what the Bible teaches us to do. Remember Brother Larry. Y'all remember us tomorrow if you'll be traveling. That's what we tell you. Remember these. Pointed unto man wants to die, folks, and that don't mean you got to be old to die. No. You can die at any age, and I promise you, you'll get it right the first time. No. You say, I don't, yeah, I do, because the Bible says it's appointed once. Yeah. So if the Bible says it's appointed once, you're going to die. And you will die at that appointed time. Can you go to an early grave? I think you can. I think we have evidence of that in the Word of God. You go against God, you go against the will of God, you're going to check out here earlier. Very possibly. I'm not saying you will, but I'm saying you can. I also remember this. The Bible says, honor your father and your mother that your days may be long upon the earth. Do you believe that? I do. I do. <coughs> People don't want to get in this word. The answers are here. Amen. God will not go against his word. Any others? Oh yes, remember this family. We don't know what tomorrow holds for us, any of us. I'll take a step further. You don't know what the rest of tonight holds for you, neither do I. Don't forget me. Still remember Connie, please. Getting that time of year too, this pneumonia, flu, all that stuff starts and bronchitis and remember these.
Caleb, pray for us, would you, brother? Dear Heavenly Father, I do thank you for another day that you've given us. To. Yes, thank, thank you for you. the ability to gather in your house. Yes. Just thank you for every family that's here represented. Just pray that you'd be with them in a special way, Lord. Amen. Just pray that you'd be with those who've lost a loved one, Lord. Mm -hmm. Just pray that you'd give them comfort and just leave them where you see fit, Lord. Yes. Just let them know that they're not alone. Father, I do ask that you be with Jody and just give him the words that you'd have him to preach to us, Lord. Just give him the lesson that you'd have him to teach. Just ask that you be with all the Sunday school teachers and just give them what you'd have them to, to say, Lord. Mm -hmm. Just ask that you be with this church and everything that's done in it, Lord. Yes. Pass them, I do pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Brother Caleb. Appreciate the good, humble prayer. Book of Daniel tonight. Get a few more verses covered here. Chapter number 10. We weren't here last Wednesday night. We moved our service over to Pinnacle View. Appreciate those of you that made your way out to that revival. Victory Song did a great job singing as they always do. But tonight, Daniel chapter number 10. Some of you are wondering when are we ever going to get through with the book of Daniel? Well, we will. We will. Uh, actually, I'll probably. I say I, okay? <laughs> but it's all going to depend on what the Lord's got to say about it. Amen. I may put it in overdrive, these last two chapters, because I think a lot of this we've already covered through our study of the book of Revelation. It should really be a review more than anything. But we'll see what the Lord's got in store. But for right now, Daniel chapter 10, I've got a mark down about my verse number 14, but I'm going to back up to 13. But the prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood me one and twenty days. But lo, Michael, one of the chief princes, came to help me, and I remained there with the kings. Is that got a yes on it? Is that more than one? Do you believe the devil's got many spiritual evil demons Amen. in representation out there? Amen. Absolutely. I agree. Now let's talk about Michael just a minute because we have already discussed this and hopefully put it to bed that he is the only archangel that is mentioned in the word of God that he is called an archangel. But I think we have evidence that there's probably more because there in verse 13 right in the middle it says one of the chief princes. Is that got an S on it? That means there's more than just one chief prince. We spoke about that prince back in our Ezekiel study, if I remember correctly, Brother Larry, on Tuesday mornings. And we went back and forth some thinking, who was this prince? Who, who could this prince be? Well, is it possible this prince that's mentioned in Ezekiel could be one of God's chosen, Amen. possibly an archangel? We don't know. The Bible doesn't state it, so we're not sure. But I believe there's more than just one archangel, if you will, or chief prince. But we only have one listed by name in the word of God. So that we can say for certain. Now, just so you'll know, he is mentioned five times in the word of God. Three of those times are in the Old Testament, right here in the book of Daniel. So I want us to look at these. Chapter 10 Verse number 13, we just read that one. That's the first mention that I find we have of this archangel, Michael. A few verses down, if you go to verse 21 in chapter 10, it says, But I will show thee that which is noted in the scripture of truth, and there is none that holdeth with me in these things, but Michael, your prince. Now let's flip over to chapter 12 of Daniel and verse number 1. And at that time shall Michael stand up, the great prince, which standeth for the children of thy people. And there shall be a time of trouble, such as never was since there was a nation, even to that same time. And at that time thy people shall be delivered, every one that shall be found written 
in the book. And that's not necessarily the book of life, okay? I want you to understand that too. So we have three instances of Michael here in the Old Testament. Now we've got two listings for Michael in the New Testament. And the first one is found in Jude. So go all the way to Revelation and turn back one book to the book of Jude, which has one chapter, okay? Jude, verse number 9. Yet Michael the archangel, when contending with the devil, he disputed about the body of Moses, durst not bring against him a railing accusation, but said, The Lord rebuke thee. Let me go ahead and stop right there and put this in while we're parked here for just a second. You and I are no match for the devil. Amen. Don't think you are. Don't even get that inclination. You are no match for the devil. If Michael, being the chief prince, the archangel, doesn't even bring accusation against him, but said, the Lord rebuked thee. You've got to remember, what was God's, other than mankind, what was his most prized creation? The anointed cherubim, it seemed. Who is that? Satan. We're talking before his fall. Right? Amen. This would have been, if you will, number two. The anointed cherubim, but he rebelled against God. Do you not think God gave him some power? Sure. Yes, he did. And dev the devil uses that power wrong today. He's against God. He's against the things of God. So let me tell you something, church, believers. If he's against God, he's against us. Amen. Well, why do we sin then? I'll try to get back here in a minute. I'm on a limb right now. So either let me cut it off or run with it a while, okay? Well, why do we sin? True. True. I'm going back to yesterday's Bible study, the book of James, chapter 1. When he is tempted, don't let him say that he is tempted of God, because God cannot be tempted. Did you say that God took him and fired him and kicked him out? What well, y'all think? <laughs> We got that. I agree with you. I agree with you. I agree with you. I agree with you. What did Jesus say? He said, Behold, I saw Lucifer fall as lightning. Can you fall from grace? I don't think so. You can fail from grace, but you cannot fall grace because you're sealed amen thank you church y'all with me tonight good 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 my bible says that god's callings are without repentance think about that a minute so if satan was given all that power and we're asking do you think god took some of it or limited some of it i don't know but i do know this God is all powerful and there's none that matches up with him and I read this book and I realized that Satan Sister Allison is going to try but he gets a big can of whooping if you know what I mean he's going to get it and he's going to the lake of fire eternal I do, I do believe he's very powerful because even Michael durst not bring accusation against him but said the Lord rebuked thee Hmm? 
Oh, yeah, he knows. Absolutely. He's probably denying it. I can't answer for him. I don't have the mind of the devil. At least I try not. No. No. <laughs> you, you understand what I'm saying? My Lord Jesus Christ, I follow him. Amen. But, yeah, he knows, Charlie. He knows this book better than any Baptist preacher. Amen. He knows this book better than anybody. Why? We talked a little bit about this yesterday, or maybe I did too much talking yesterday, but hey, he was there when every one of the inspired writers of God wrote each letter. He knows this book better than anybody other than God. Why do you think he caught Jesus at his weakest moment, right after Jesus had been baptized? He's been driven into the wilderness, tested for 40 days. And yeah, there's a difference between test and temptation. Y'all need to come on Tuesdays if you can, I'm telling you. You need to come on Tuesday mornings if you can. You will learn something. Amen. There's a difference between test and temptation. Does God test us? Yes. But he doesn't tempt us. He tests us, but he doesn't tempt us. Did he test Abraham with Isaac? Hmm? You know, why, why does God test? Why do you give tests in school, teacher? <laughs> See what they know. Hmm? What else? So, if God gives Christians tests, he's trying to decide are we really what we say we are? It's easy to say, oh, how I love Jesus. And then go out and live a life through the week Amen. that shows you hate him. Hmm? You think God don't know our grades to the test? But here's the difference. And Larry covered this excellent yesterday. The temptation comes when you fail the test. God don't tempt you. God tests you. How are we tempted? The book of James points that out. We are tempted when we are drawn away of our own lust. I'll go with you. And the Bible says, and lust when it is conceived brings forth sin. And what happens when that sin is finished? It brings death. That's the word. Argue with the word. Amen. You say, I don't like it. Well, if you're lusting about something right now, you better be careful. Because when that lust is conceived, it's going to bring sin. And when that sin is finished, it shall bring death. Amen. Remember that. I don't know. The, the, all I know is my God can do anything. He's got all power in heaven and on earth. That's what the Bible says. I do know this. He's omnipotent. He can be anywhere at all times. The devil can't. The devil can't be everywhere at all times. But he can have his demonic angels representing him throughout. And he's done a very good job of placing them all over the place. Now let's look at Revelation chapter 12. Revelation chapter 12. Verse number 7. Now I'm going to read several verses right here. Hope I can help you with this too. There was war in heaven. Wait a minute. How could this be? If heaven's a wonderful place, no pains, no heartaches, no disappointments, no sorrow, how can there be war in heaven? Well, there's three heavens, isn't there? Hmm? What's the first heaven? What we see, the blue sky. Did you see that beautiful blue sky God blessed us with today? That Carolina blue. Ernie's amen in back there. That Carolina blue sky. That's the first heaven. Second heaven is what you're probably going to need some telescopes to see. These planets. And the third heaven is where God dwells. Now, if Satan, the Bible already says he is the prince and the power of the air of this world. 
So there was war in heaven. I believe that's what you see. We can't see it today. But I believe there's a warfare going on. Because he's the prince and the power of the air of this world. The Bible says right here, and there was war in heaven. And the Bible says, I'm in Daniel again. Let me get back to Revelation. There was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon. Who's the dragon in, in Revelation? Satan. Satan. And the dragon fought and his angels. So now listen. I still remember that message Johnny preached. It's very basic, very simple, but it still holds true. you either on the Lord's side or you're on the devil's side. It's real simple. You can't strive the fence. You either serve God or you serve the devil. Michael's got his own angels. They're holy angels. And the devil's got his bunch of angels, which are evil. You remember, right? Do angels have free will? We discussed that. Yes, they do. Some chose to go with the devil. They were wrong, but they still done it. So there was war in heaven. The Bible says, I'm still back in Daniel. Let me get back to Revelation. And the Bible says, And prevailed not, neither was there found, neither was their place found anymore in heaven. You know what that tells me? The devil and his bunch lost. So there ain't no room for them in heaven no more. The first heaven. And the Bible says, And the great dragon was cast out. That old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world, he was cast out where? What does your Bible say? Into the earth. That's where he was cast, right? What the Bible says. You say, preacher, I ain't never heard that before. Read your Bible, because this is what the Bible says. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now is come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accused them before our God day and night. Now I'm going to give you some joy of it. Because years ago, I used to think that Satan stayed in heaven and made accusation, accusation against the brethren. I have come to the realization that I believe I was wrong. You say, well, how can that be? Then it says he makes accusation to God daily. Well, I remind you, God's everywhere. Amen. Huh? He's not contained unto the third heaven because the third heaven can't contain him. He's everywhere. But Satan's contained. He's made the accusations against us. That's why we are fighting against spiritual wickedness in high places. And darkness, right? We're going to get over to Ephesians on that and cover that too later. Not tonight probably. We probably won't get there. So he is now cast out of the air into the earth. A lot of people think the devil's in hell tonight. Honey, he ain't there. He ain't there. I don't know as he's ever going. The reason I say that is because of this. We know that he's going to be cast into a bottomless pit for a thousand years. But the Bible tells me in the book of Revelation that he is cast into a lake of fire. The last enemy to be destroyed is death and hell and the grave. And at the white throne judgment, those that are in hell right now will be resurrected to take on their physical fleshly bodies, officially judged. You chose not to receive Christ as your Savior. Now you are being moved to the lake of fire <coughs> eternal, which I believe is somewhere, huh? Well, 
there's a great Gulf fix, yeah, but I believe if the, the Bible says that it's a place of darkness, yeah. weeping and wailing, <coughs> I believe it's a prepared place somewhere out in this universe that I don't know. But there is a lake of fire. And that's where the devil will spend his eternity. Don't worry, he ain't going to get out easy here. He will spend it all of eternity right there. But I can tell you one that's been to hell. Jesus. And he went and he preached unto the spirits that were there. And the Bible says they were unruly just as men are today. And I'm giving you Bible tonight. Now you take all this stuff you've heard through the years. And you'll have to sort that out in your head. I'm just telling you what the Bible says. You know, the Bible says that heaven and earth is going to pass away, but his word is going to stand forever. Now, let me explain that to you. Because God's heaven ain't going to pass away. But the heaven that we know of, the first heaven that we see, the blue sky, heaven and earth is going to pass away. Hmm? John the Revelator said, I saw no more heaven. He said, Behold. I make a new heaven and a new earth. The former things are passed away, and there was no more sea. I don't think so. Exactly. Hell's going to be put into the lake of fire eternal. The reason, go ahead. what he was alluding to. Yeah. I don't like to call it purgatory, but I'm not knocking you for that. There was a good side to hell and there was a bad side to hell. Yeah. Okay. Then there was a great gulf fixed in between where neither could cross over. In other words, if you died lost, you went to the bad side of hell. If you was a believer in Christ, you went to the good side of hell. And that's, where Jesus that's where he led captivity captive. That's where he went and brought them out. See, the Jews considered the good side of hell paradise. That's what they call it. You remember the thief on the cross? He said, Lord, remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom. Jesus didn't say, today you're going to be with me in heaven. He says, today thou shalt be with me in paradise. But they wouldn't. Excuse me. Was there many that did not believe in Jesus? Still unruly, just as men are today. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Cool. You know, people, I believe there was plenty there that wanted to get out. Yeah. I made a mistake. I want to go with you. Too late. But there was probably others there that just, just flat out, no, I ain't going to. And that's the way it is with people today. You can preach, you can teach till you're blue in the face. And the reason they will not turn loose and go with God is because they enjoy the pleasures of sin. Amen. They make a choice. I'm going to continue on a sinful road. Just what I'm doing, you can preach it, you can teach it. And I'll say maybe you're right, but that don't make I'm going to change my way. You know, the hardest thing for people to do today is change their way. I don't care what it is. It's for everybody. If you don't believe me, you park about where you normally park tonight. Mm -hmm. Did you get up about the same time this morning you normally do? Brush your teeth, brush your hair about the same time? Get off your job about the same You left your driveway probably within just a few minutes of what you normally do every day. Mm -hmm. We're preachers of habit. It's what we are. Let me go back to Daniel. Let me see if I can cover one more verse. Verse 14. It says, Now I am, chapter 10, verse 14 of Daniel. Now I am come to make thee understand what shall befall thy people. Here it is, folks. People say, when's this going to happen? 
When's it going to take place? The Bible clearly tells us. He says, now I'm going to tell you what shall befall thy people in the latter days. For yet the vision is for many days. What do you think that means? It's pointing. It's pointing to the tribulation. And to what? He says, befall thy people. Who is Daniel's people? What was Daniel? A Jew? He clears it up right here. This is what is going to befall. Listen. Please don't misunderstand me. I know the Jews are God's chosen people. I realize that. I know enough of the word of God. They are his chosen people. But don't you get the mindset that some people are teaching today that the Jews are not going to face any troubles. My Bible says they're going to face some mighty big troubles. Amen. And in the latter half of that tribulation, the last three and a half years, which is referred to as the Great Tribulation, a day of Jacob's trouble, a day that has never been nor shall ever be again, they are going to be forced out of the land the Gentile forces led by the Antichrist is coming to march through the land of Israel. Their, their goal is to totally annihilate and wipe out any Jew that ever is on the face of this earth. But they're going to be in the wilderness. Whew, it gives me chill. I'm about to jump. I'm trying to stay calm. It's Wednesday night. They've been in the wilderness one other time. God sent them a deliverer. Right. And they wouldn't listen to him. Right. All they did was murmur and complain. What was it you said, Larry? All he did was give a bunch of babies back, uh, pacifiers for 40 years out in the wilderness. All Moses did. But listen, when it seems like this is it, and the Antichrist and the Gentile armies and the forces are going to win, here comes King Jesus. Amen. Coming to get them. And the Bible says, I believe it's in the book of Zephaniah. I believe that's right. Don't hold me to that. It's one of the minor prophets, Zephaniah. That he is coming back and all the nations of the earth are going to bewail him. And the Jews are going to be crying and they're going to recognize this is the Messiah. Amen. The one that we rejected the first time. He is king. He is our deliverer. And he is going to destroy all the Antichrist armies with the sword of his mouth. We're coming back with him. Then what's going to happen? He's going to take his people out of the wilderness <laughs> into the promised land. Amen. And it's going to be the land that was promised that has never been the same since, yeah. size-wise. You remember what was that Abraham, Abrahamic covenant? He said, look to the north, to the south, to the east, to the west. As far as you look, it's yours. God gave it to him. And guess what? The Gentile forces, they think they got the Gaza Strip right now. They better get out of there. They better get out of there. God's coming back. Jesus is coming back. Let me rephrase that. Jesus is coming back. And he is going to sit upon King David's throne. And he will rule with an iron. A rod of iron. He'll put out anything that's wrong. He ain't going to put up with it. Ain't nobody going to mess with him. And the Jews is going to say, this is our Messiah. This is our Savior. This is our Lord. Where's the devil going to be during that? He's going to be bound for how long? A thousand, years. A thousand years in the bottomless pit. And the Bible doesn't say that Jesus does it, does it? Does that make sense? The Bible doesn't say that Jesus does it, does it? <laughs> Excuse me, I'm from Westfield. <laughs> no, but I tell you what the Bible says. And a strong angel bound the devil. I believe Jesus says, take care of my life work. Got time to fool with him. 
you just go bind him and put him in that bottomless pit and seal it. And he won't be loosed until I say he'll be loosed. Amen. Well, I think I'll stop right there. You think that's going to be Michael? I don't know. I don't know. The Bible says a strong angel. A strong angel. I don't know. Uh, very possibly. Very, because we realized through the book of Daniel that he said, did I cover all five places of Michael in the word of God? I think I did. Y'all excuse me, I'm slipping. You know what five is? Grace. Grace. How are we going to make it? How are, we gonna, how are the Jews going to make it? How are we going to make it? Grace. But anyway, I know that the Bible teaches us in the book of Daniel that Michael is called their prince. Michael is the prince for the Jewish people. Michael is a fighter. Michael, every time you read the word of God, you go about he's fighting. Gabriel is an announcer. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And suddenly there appeared with them a multitude of the heavenly hosts saying, Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace, goodwill to men. Michael's always delivering. I mean, excuse me, Gabriel's always delivering. Gabriel showed up to John the Baptist's daddy. He said, you're going to have a son. He said, I'm old. How can these things be? I need a sign. He said, okay, here it is. You can't talk. <laughs> so there's a lot of things we don't necessarily understand or know, but I'm glad we don't have to. Amen. We walk by faith, and faith is saying, God, this is your word, Amen. and I believe your word, and I trust your word, even if I don't understand it. If God says it is sin and I am to leave it alone, then I am to leave it alone no matter whether I understand why I should or shouldn't. That's faith. Would you agree with me on that? Appreciate you tonight. I'm letting y'all out early. Enjoy. Enjoy. You remember that next time I go long and you want to cut me up over lunch at the Sunday dinner table. Sunday, Wednesday night, he let us out a little early. You can go get you a milkshake or something. No, I hope you understand. I only give you what God says, and when God says hush, I hush. Amen. So if it's long on Sunday, it's long on Sunday. If it's long on Wednesday, it's long on Wednesday. If it's short on Sunday, it's short on Sunday. Y'all waiting for that one. But whatever it is, I just hush when God says hush. <laughs> and that's exactly what I'm doing right now. Let's all stand. <coughs> Much to pray for. Much to pray for. Many, many, many. Not everybody was called out tonight, I know. But God knows our hearts. Intercede one for another. God knows what's going on. God is able. Lord willing, we'll see you Sunday morning. If we're still here. Now I'm going to tell you something. If the rapture happens between now and Sunday morning, this pastor will not be here. I'll be gone. And I hope won't none of y'all be here. If you are, woe is you. You better receive Christ. Amen. You better receive him. Charlie, dismiss us in prayer.